get ready for some brilliant exegesis of Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 by the Gnostic Calvinist heretic James White. Uh, when I mean exegesis, I simply mean a failure to actually address the biblically consistent theology of free will and a failure to address a text that blatantly show the power of contrary choice. You're going to see James White, uh, his attempt to explain it away is a big joke, plain and simple. So check this out. I, I mean, literally, I hope Jesse Morrell helps you to see where the problem is. According to you, Psalm 115. Is You're saying God can't give us free will. You're saying God can't. Of course not. It's not taught in the Bible. God, you know, the Bible says, I set before you life and death. Choose life. He's that means God is giving you free will. So, uh, very, very shallow. Um, because God holds men accountable and says, choose life or death, that means that you have autonomous free will. Okay, it could be creaturely free will. But I'm not going to go there because that messes up all my, all my theology. And besides that, I can't go there. You have to have autonomous free will because I've already denied that to my God by denying him knowledge of future events. So somebody's got to have it. And since God doesn't have it, I guess mankind has to have it. Wow. <laughs> what a mess. Wow. That is his brilliant exegesis of Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. A simple verse that totally demolishes Calvinism and proves free will and the power of contrary choice. Um, it, it just plain state, oh, you know, it's, 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 it could be referring to creaturely free will, but I won't do it because it makes problems for my doctor. And so, you know, I mean, if it's not God, then someone must have it. I mean, what, what is he even talking about? I mean, this is just, this is just, you know, you know, a great example of how he's unable to make his this verse fit in with his preconceived ideas and, and pre-commitment to his tulip doctrine, his Gnostic heresy. I mean, the scriptures very clearly teach the power of contrary choice. Again, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, uh, uh, if you want the full context, Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 down to verse 20 is, 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 the, is the passage in, in the context. Actually, verse 11, if you want the real context, uh, the, act, the actual full teaching. Uh, Deuteronomy 11 verses 26 down to verse 28 teaches the power of contrary choice. Jeremiah 21 verse 8 to 10 is another scripture on the uh, matter. Just pulling up my verse references. You know, there's other scriptures like um, Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 to 6, Deuteronomy 28 verse 15 to 20, Isaiah 1 verse 16 to 20. Deuteronomy 30, verse 1 to 3. There's uh, Jeremiah 38, verse 20 down to verse 21. I mean, on and on it goes. There's Leviticus 26 is a good passage on that. You know, it talks about how they can walk contrary to, to, God says like, you know, you walk contrary to me. I mean, just on and on it goes. It's a very consistent theme. Uh, the power of contrary choice, because, and by the way, it's a God-centered doctrine because God is the one who provides that power of contrary choice. God sets two alternatives and God says choose and he'll hold you accountable for what choice you make. Free will is a consistently God-centered, God-glorifying theology, as opposed to the man-made, man-centered, man-exalting, man-glorifying Gnostic heresy of Calvinism and theistic determinism. So, yeah, brilliant exegesis from James White. And by I mean exegesis, I mean that in jest, because he totally failed to actually address the verse. He didn't really address it at all. He just brushes it off, because he can't make it fit in with his, his uh, Calvinist you know, pre-commitment to his tool of theology. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.